I'm going to talk about a uh, novel data layout optimization in Vision Compiler. Vision Compiler is Huawei's LLVM based C, C++ Fortran compiler. It has been under development for the past four years. Uh, we primarily optimize for Kunpeng ARM servers, which are made by Huawei. We support x86 as well. We have talked about the internals of our compilers uh, in the past couple of years in this conference and some other similar conferences. Very quick introduction to data layout optimizations. So there are many <coughs> well-known optimizations of this kind. Uh, they come under different names. Probably the most famous one is array of a structure to a structure of arrays. Uh, I have a picture to represent <coughs> this. Uh, so assume you have a, a structure which has two fields, A and B, and you have an array of this, this uh, structure as in the picture on top. And if you have a hot loop that accesses only one of the fields, with each access to the hot field, you bring also the code field to cache, and so you use your cache and memory bandwidths for that code field as well. So it makes sense to separate the two fields into two different arrays, uh, uh, each for its own. And this gives you better locality and a speed up. These, are, these optimizations are very critical for spec CPU benchmarks, and that's probably one of the reasons that they are well known. For the specific optimization that I quickly introduced, we have a new approach. We talked about that earlier this year in uh, one of the workshops in CGO. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now is a new optimization called nested container flattening. So the purpose of my talk is essential to the, explain the name. So I will cover some high level description of the transformation and some key issues in legality analysis. So hopefully th that would <coughs> make the name clear. So let's see what is the problem that we want to solve. Let's assume you have a C++ workload. You have four classes, A, B, C, and D. And uh, you, uh, class D is not, the source code of class D is not represented, it's not important. <coughs> but <coughs> the relationship that the objects of these classes have in memory is uh, represented in that picture. So class A has a pointer to an array of B objects. And then these B objects, each of them has a pointer to a C object. Uh, C has a pointer, uh, C has a vector of D pointers. And then you have a group of D objects in memory. And these D and C objects are mm, scattered in memory. They are not necessarily adjacent. And then <laughs> to reach from A to D, we have this code pattern that we start from A and we go all the way to D and call a method on of D class. So there are a number of loads, and each load is likely to cause a cache miss. And these loads are only there because we need to go from A to D. Uh, this specific instruction, intermediate loads don't have any other purpose. So you can imagine this would be this would be very slow. And we want to make this fast. How do we, do we make it faster? We essentially introduce this new data structure that is on the right side, and we add that to the left side of the picture, which already exists. The picture on the left may remain the same, or it may go through some changes because we can eliminate some of the D pointers that we have now on the right. That depends on the program. So <clears throat> now, um, once you do this, uh, so, so on the right, we have this, all, we gather all relevant D pointers and we put them in one array. They are all now adjacent to each other. And we can put this whole new data structure in A object, or we can put a pointer to this new data structure in the A object. And so before transformation, we had the left side. When we want to go from A to D, we have this picture on the left side. We have a sequence of loads. Now, after the transformation, we have the picture on the right side. So going from A to D is fewer number of loads. And if you look at the picture, that would explain the name, the, the word flattening in the name. So now let's talk a little bit about legality analysis that we need to do. Uh, for a transformation like this, you would need a very deep understanding of the lifetime of objects when we create them, when we allocate, disallocate them. 
And the uh, first thing that comes to my mind, to mind is we need a pointer analysis. Uh, but to have a pointer analysis that has the precision and also it's fast enough, it's uh, very difficult. So uh, we, we, while we do some pointer analysis, we also heavily rely on preserving C++ source code information. We try to use that information in the mid-end to help analysis for legality. And uh, uh, what I want to do, I just want to explain two central concepts that we have in legality analysis. One is the notion of nested objects, and the other one is container. And uh, once I do that, this complete, completes the explanation of the name, which was nested container flattening. So uh, hopefully that whole thing makes sense after that. So what is a nested object? So there's probably an inaccuracy here because I have said B. Uh, probably everywhere that I say <coughs> B here, it's better to put a star B. That's what I really mean. So we say B is nested in class A, that object B, really a star B, nested in class A. It means there is no way to access this object outside of class A member functions. So entire lifetime of B from allocation to this allocation uh, is within the lifetime of the A object. Uh, now, to, re to use C++ source code information to prove this property, um, you need to consider many different things that can happen in C++, different ways of doing the same thing, many different C++ features. Um, uh, now, the question is why this is useful? What's the benefit? I have a toy example to explain it. So we have class B, it has four functions, function one, two, three, and four. And then we have class A, which has a pointer to a B object. Uh, let's assume B is nested in A. And let's assume all uses of B are shown in this picture. So one important thing here is that we only call function one and function two on B. We never call function three or function four. Uh, why is that useful? Because uh, when we want to understand what happens to B, when we want to analyze B and prove some properties of B, uh, we can just ignore function three and function four. That makes our analysis much simpler. Uh, that's one important uh, benefit of these nested objects. Then there is notion of container, which is not the standard uh, meaning as the container has in L STL and elsewhere. Uh, so I explained it with an example in this picture. So here I have class A and class B, and there is a class C that is not shown, but class B has a pointer to C. So here B is a container for C. B is nested in A, and it's a container for C. And being nested in A, uh, is useful, it helps us to prove that it's a container for C. And what I mean by container is that from those four functions in B, only the first one is ever called. The first one adds new C objects to, uh, to B. The, the next three ones modifies the objects that are already added. So if we only add <coughs> things, but we do not remove them or modify them, then we call it container. And so we explain nested, objects, containers, and flattening. So back to the picture that I had earlier, if we have this sequence of classes that each one is nested in the previous one as is, and is a container for the next one, then we can apply this transformation and make that tree flat and make the accesses faster. So an optimization like this is difficult to implement and uh, time consuming. Sure, we get 35% um, improvement on SPEC benchmark, that's useful. But um, one question is that, is there any benefit beyond that? And my answer to that is there is a benefit, and which is the infrastructure that we develop for this optimization. A standard data layout optimizations usually require a good pointer analysis, and that pointer analysis is useful for uh, other purposes beyond the specific optimization that we have. And the same thing, uh, I believe applies here. I believe the ideas that we have developed for this uh, optimization could be useful in a more general case, and um, we are currently investigating applications of uh, 
these ideas in other C++ workloads. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan.